Greetings, friends. My name is Richard Cromwell. I'm the Manufacturing Applications Engineer here at Go Engineer in Auburn Hills. I'm broadcasting and recording live uh, from the floor of the Go Engineer Auburn Hills, Michigan Additive Manufacturing Lab. I want to thank those of you that have graciously taken the time from your busy day to join me for this live webinar, but also to the future viewers that will watch this at some point. Well, today we're going to be talking about Antero, which is Stratasys's latest ultra-performance PEC-based thermoplastic. And I'll be framing the discussion around printing it primarily on the Stratasys Fortis 450MC, as for the last several weeks, I've been printing quite a bit of it here on 450. I have uh, to share with you what I have learned by focusing on this material, uh, why a PEC-based filament is such a great material to print with, and how Antero stacks up against other materials in the Stratasys lineup. We will also discuss the two different Antero formulations, what equipment and consumables are required, and uh, then we will also discuss um, some design considerations, support removal, and other best practices when working with Antero, and, and more, uh, all while showing you models that I've been creating here in the lab. One last thing, this presentation is in a live webinar format, so while you can see and hear me, I cannot see or hear you. So please, if you have any questions like clarifications about a point or if you want to see a model from a different angle, uh, please just type that into the chat. What problem are we really trying to solve with Antero? And it basically started out as aerospace and auto industries looking for a way to reduce weight and cost of parts. Uh, moving from metal to plastic where possible is always going to be a good move. Metal parts are heavy and they take a long time to produce. Uh, require CNC machining, which can take weeks or longer in lead time. CNC machining parts is expensive, and it's even more expensive if you have to iterate a design and modify one. And so there's many advantages to moving away from the CNC machining into the additive manufacturing space. So, just to give you an idea, it took about four hours and 24 minutes for me to print that um, little piece. And it used approximately 6.55 cubic inches of material, um, about three inches of support, cubic inches of support, and material cost totally was about $146, which is gonna be considerably less than the cost of machining that. And uh, the lead time was very short. So most thermoplastics fail when they come in contact with chemicals such as fuel, um, solvents, or hydraulic fluids. So that kind of uh, limits their use um, up until now as one of the options that manufacturers have today is to turn to high performance thermoplastics that can withstand the chemical beating that they get from solvents and fuel. Um, one such option is uh, turning to the polyaryl ether ketone family, the PAEK group of polymers. And a terrific choice is the polyether ketone ketone polymer, also known as PEC. Um, it is highly chemical resistant. It has high strength, high heat resistance, and it's often compared um, to polyether ether ketone, which is P. In the past, when I have visited clients' facilities and we are discussing Stratasys material applications, once I mention Antero is a PEC-based uh, material, sometimes uh, the client will ask if I meant to say PEC. And so I just wanted to briefly talk about the differences between PEC and PEEP and why PEC is the superior choice for additive manufacturing. Both PEC and PEEP are primarily made from ketone and ether. PEC has more ketone bonds though, and ketone bonds are more flexible than ether bonds. And so this increases the rigidity of the polymer chains and that raises the glass transition temperature. If we look at some of the chemistry here, in PEC, the position of the ketone bonds in its aromatic ring can vary, which makes it possible to modify the melting temperature and the crystallization rate. With that, PEC can be treated as an amorphous polymer. This leads to superior layer adhesion and higher tensile strength on each axis. PEC is less affected by cooling than a lot of other materials, including PEAK, the N12CF, as better tray adhesion and thus avoiding the warpage of parts. 
PEC is easier to print, um, has a superior visual appearance, and PEC has better wear and friction properties. Talk a little bit about where PEC came from. PEC was invented in the 1960s as part of the Apollo space program. It was first commercially produced and marketed in 1988 by DuPont for the aerospace sector. Commercial production requires a complex process and significant financial investment. Today, PEC parts are primarily fabricated from prefabricated PEC stock, which comes in blocks or cylinders, and they must be machined. Uh, while this solves some of the manufacturer's problems of light weighting and chemical resistance, creating the actual part is still really cumbersome and costly. So this presents some customer challenges with using standard PEC. Um, critical parts where PEC is required are usually highly customized. They're needed in low volumes and they're challenging to produce. Uh, limitations of the PEC stock shapes and sizes are a factor. M machining limits design options. And uh, again, anytime machining is involved, it's gonna incur lengthy production times. And so that brings us to Antero. So this is uh, Stratasys' solution. It's a PEC-based FDM thermoplastic with excellent mechanical properties that include high strength, high heat, uh, resistance, toughness, and wear resistance. These superior qualities make it a lighter alternative to aluminum and steel in certain use cases. Chemical resistance and minimal outcasting provide suitability for aerospace applications where prototypes and parts are exposed to jet fuel, oil, hydraulic fluid. Other uses include industrial applications where high strength and chemical resistance are needed. 3D printing with Antero 800NA uh, FDM filament avoids the waste associated with subtractive manufacturing of high cost bulk stock material. There is also an additional formulation of Antero called Antero A40CNO3. It is a PEC-based FDM thermoplastic as well. Uh, it combines all those excellent physical and mechanical qualities of Antero with electrostatic dissipative properties. The material is filled 3% by weight with carbon nanotubes. As a high-performance polymer, uh, it exhibits exceptional chemical and wear resistance Again, ultra-low outgassing properties and consistent ESD performance. This makes this material, material particularly suitable for space and industrial applications where these qualities are critical. The unique combination of materials properties allow it to be used in the most demanding of applications, such as aerospace, space, travel, oil, and gas. It's stronger and stiffer and higher use temp chem resistance when compared to uh, like a standard material like ABS. Um, but it is a little bit more pricey. It's four times the cost of ABS. So the market problems that Antero uh, 840 CNO3, which is the uh, electrostatic dissipative uh, formulation, is positioned to solve. Uh, again, producing parts through traditional methods, so metal, plated metal, is very costly and heavy. Um, fixtures decay, decay or degrade over time after being exposed to harsh chemicals. And static buildup in any process, especially when dealing with sensitive electronics, may cause electrostatic discharge, thus damaging the opponents. So I've been talking a little bit about ESD properties of Antero A40CNO3, and uh, I want to take a look at why that is so important. ESD stands for electrostatic discharge, and under certain conditions, transference of electrical potential may occur when two materials with different charges come into proximity to each other. A common phenomenon known as electrostatic discharge can range in magnitude from a barely measurable electron movement all the way up to hundreds of millions of volts contained in the typical lightning strike or an ordinary thunderstorm. ESD is hazardous or destructive in many situations. Sparking is a natural concern in any area where flammable gas or liquid is present, and these applications require strict safety measures to prevent static electricity buildup and discharge. Small non-visible ESD events can also cause serious problems, especially in the area of sensitive electronic components assembly. As engineers design automated manufacturing procedures, they commonly select static dissipated materials for any surface that will encounter sensitive electronic components. These special materials are able to conduct electricity but do so at a very slow rate. Any buildup of static charges dissipate without the sudden discharge that may cause harm to the internal structure of silicon circuits. So here, is a enclosure for a circuit board that is printed out of Antero 840CNO3. Um, and you can see it's, it's ideal because of the ESD properties. You can avoid assembly and splitting print jobs with a large build chamber. I printed this in one print uh, myself. 
still all those fantastic mechanical properties, and it is completely customizable. I'm going to actually pull this off the shelf here. I'm going to show you. I printed that. Um, it's a really cool model. It has um, topology optimized um, design, very organic looking. And then I went as far as to print a mock circuit board to go in it. Uh, I used a different machine, the Polyjet uh, J55 for this. Um, what was amazing is I pulled these off the machine, broke the support off, was able to pop this, uh, it, it fit exactly into the um, housing, and it, I didn't have to do any sanding or anything to get it to close like this. It, was just, it just came off the machine. So this is a neat chart. It talks about uh, some of the pros and cons between traditional um, electrostatic dissipative treatments that you can apply or um, other 3D printing additive manufacturing methodologies where um, ESD materials are present. At the end of the day, Antero 840CN03 gives you the most consistent ESD properties. Um, it has fantastic elongation and toughness. Um, it's more dimensionally stable with large parts, uh, doesn't work. The cost winner for low volume large parts, uh, FDM ease of use advantage over SLS, which is a whole webinar on its own, um, FDM design freedom advantages, and the ability for customers to bring this capability of printing high quality ESD uh, materials in-house. So Antero 800, and a in the FDM portfolio, I wanted to do a comparative analysis between Altem and Antero. And for a, quite some time, Altem has been the go-to for ultra-performance uh, thermal plastics due to the um, high heat resistance, um, and it is incredibly strong. But Antero is uh, stronger, and it has a higher percentage of elongation break. It has excellent high heat resistance uh, properties, and it also exceeds NASA's vacuum outgassing requirements. Here's another chart that shows where Antero stacks up in tensile strength versus flexural strength. And it's right up there with Ultem 1010 and surpasses it in the tensile strength. Chart that shows exactly where it is uh, in relation to the other materials available from Stratasys. Heat deflection temperature is also really good. It's about on par with Ultem 9085 also does well with heat deflection versus impact strength. But Antero isn't always the answer, as you can see uh, when it comes to stiffness to weight ratio. Nylon 12 CF, uh, the carbon fill of nylon, still uh, comes out significantly ahead. But one of the nice things that you have to keep in mind is that if you can print Antero, your machine can also print nylon 12 carbon fiber. It's the same upgrade. This is really where Antero takes the cake, is in chemical resistance comparison. Antero outperforms every other material, including Ultim 1010, obviously ASA, and the Nylon 12CF. Yeah. But it also goes to show you that, you know, when you're selecting a material, uh, you, there's a lot of different factors that you need to take into account. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the product details. This, it comes in a 10 slice. So what that means is that you can use uh, on the Fortis machines, the tip will give you a 10,000 slice uh, layer height in the Z direction. Uh, that's 0.254 millimeters. So that's a nice resolution. The spool sizes are the standard uh, 92 cubic inches for the Fortis machines. The only support that you can use with Antero is the SUP 800B. It's a specially formulated breakaway support. The two colors of, of the Antero formulations are 800NA is like a honey gold color, and then the 840CNO3 formulation is black. Uh, a 450 machine has uh, requires the Nylon 12 CF Antero upgrade, and you have to use a T20F tip. Uh, the F900 requires the hard pad upgrade and a T20D tip. The software that you can utilize uh, to slice and process Antero is, 
uh, Stratus is this fabulous uh, FDM slicing software insight. You can also use GrabCAD print with the advanced FDM. Designing parts for Antero 800 NA or 840 uh, CNO3 follows much of the same process for designing other FDM parts. And design for additive manufacturing guidelines should be followed. For example, utilizing self-supporting angles where possible, serving minimum wall thicknesses, allowing proper clearance for assemblies. A general list of those design and additive manufacturing guidelines can be found in the Stratasys Fused Deposition Modeling Design Guideline document. Unique to Antero 800NA and other high-performance FDM materials is this breakaway support system. Now, for Antero, we use sub 800B. We have to use that in our designs um, to support the model material in areas of overhang to prevent sagging. Although Antero breakaway support is one of the easiest supports to be removed by hand, the designer should take this into account when designing the part. Self-supporting angles, angles greater than 45 degrees from the build platen should be used whenever possible to eliminate support material. Areas that require support must be accessible for removal. So, part processing. Antero can be sliced quickly and easily in GrabCAD, but you can exert much greater control over the tool pathing and extrusion parameters by utilizing advanced FDM controls and insight. Default processing parameters should be used unless the user is sufficiently advanced with insight or change, it, change values produce better results for a specific geometry and that's been confirmed. Primary consideration is again, support removal. The part has to be orientated such that the support is accessible to be able to get it out. Uh, you can use perforation layers, can be added to the support structure, basically allowing you to remove it much easier. It's a layer of material on top of the support, just very thin, and it just allows everything to kind of break away a little bit quicker. Part pack. So multiple Antero 800 NA parts can be packed together in the same build. Part packing reduces build time due to the elimination of the tip swaps between model and support material for each part. It should be used to increase system utilization by eliminating downtime when operators are not present. This is typical for most of the FDM materials. One other thing though, is that for higher quality seams and reduced potential for purge material in the part, you wanna make sure to include a sacrificial tower in your build uh, that is the full height of the parts. What type of system preparations need to take place with your 450MC? Uh, Antero requires the hardened system upgrade. Uh, you have to use that custom T20F tip for the model material. You use a standard T16 tip for the support material. Both Antero 800NA and 840CNO3 formulations use that sub 800B breakaway support material. You have to use the high temperature uh, material build sheets, which I like a lot. They tend to go on a little bit easier than the nylon carbon fiber sheets. Something you have to keep in mind is the tip life of the T20F Antero 800NA tip is four canisters of material. I actually have one that I use just for 800NA and another that I use for 840CNO3. Short tool paths are harder on the tips than longer tool paths. So if you're building parts with many short tool paths, it is recommended to change the tip after three canisters. A warning will pop up as uh, the Fortis machines track the odometer on your tips. And so after three, canisters, you're going to get a warning. And, and if you're running a lot of short tool paths, small parts and things like that, you're going to want to uh, switch that out. Um, the parts are easily removed from the build sheet by uh, simply flexing them and pulling it off. Uh, but once the parts are removed from the build sheet, a support material can be removed by breaking it off by hand, um, using a chisel or scraper, using pliers or by other various picks and other tools. And sometimes it, it's like uh, eating crab legs where you'll just be wasting your time trying to get all these little shreds and all of a sudden a big chunk comes off and you're like super, so super, super happy about it. Post-processing of Antero. Antero 800NA uh, or the 840CNO3 can be sanded, painted, media blasted, bonded, machined, drilled. It can receive inserts, etc., just like all the other uh, thermoplastics. Unlike all the other thermoplastics, you can uh, additionally anneal the antero. The purpose of annealing is to use heat to alter the crystalline microstructure of the material in order to augment properties such as the strength, the hardness, and the ductility. In some materials, it's also used to remove stress in the material by relaxing the internal bonds. The act of annealing consists of heating the material up above its recrystallization temperature and maintaining a suitable temperature for a suitable amount of time, and then cooling the material evenly. So once the parts are removed from the build sheet, support material can be removed by breaking off by hand, chiseled, scraper, 
music flyers, or like in this case, they basically just were popping out. You want to set your oven to 392 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 200 degrees Celsius, and allow the oven to reach this temperature while completing the following steps. A standard industrial oven can be used. I strongly discourage you from using the uh, toaster oven in the shared office space. Uh, that is frowned upon. Uh, nonetheless, it is desired to have the temperature high enough to minimize the amount of time the annealing process takes, but not to have it too close to the melt temperature of the material. Uh, the temperature of 200 degrees Celsius was determined in testing to be a good set point for annealing. So what you want to do is arrange the specimens to be annealed in a, a half full container of fine sand. Um, you can use salt as an alternative, uh, which ensures that all the packing media is removed from the specimens as they can be soaked in water after annealing to dissolve the salt. You want to proceed to cover the samples once arranged so that they are completely submerged in the sand. The sand will prevent the specimens from moving in an uncontrolled manner as the temperature exceeds the recrystallization. This will prevent the specimens from warping or deforming during the annealing process. And it also enables the specimens to anneal slowly. It prevents any undue stresses associated with rapid heating and cooling. Place both uh, sand containers in the oven for three hours and allow the oven to reach a set point temperature of 200 degrees Celsius. After inserting the samples, but before starting the countdown to removal. Once removed from the oven, allow the specimens to cool to ambient temperature before removing them from the sand bag. After cooling, remove the samples from the sand, clean off as much sand as possible in the container at this point, and the remaining sand can be washed off with water or removed with other appropriate means of water can be used. What does annealing Antero provide for us? Well, it increases the strength, and it also yields a higher heat resistance, but it does not change the outcast. All right, now let's go into some Antero use cases. And I'll be showing you some models. So the first thing that we're gonna show you is uh, an aircraft support bracket. You know, think about this, like parts that are used in gray spaces behind skins of uh, fuselage or wings where weight optimization support brackets are needed and may be exposed to jet fuel or hydraulic fluids. So we want to reduce the weight of the aircraft Reduce cost on low volume complex parts. Uh, we want to be able to do fast iteration on design verification without large supply chain delays. And if we use traditional manufacturing, we're limited in design freedom. So you can see this is a very densely filled part. You can see what we do. Check that out. An aircraft custom duct. Big piece. Ducting comes late in aircraft design, so creating space and routing challenges for engineers. We were able to print this out of the 800 NA and uh, design flexibility with, without cost, time, or weight penalties. And uh, I actually printed, this is uh, a 50% reduction in size. The original was printed on a 900, um, but it's a very uh, robust part considering how thin the walls are. I have a fiber optic routing component. And I actually, this is how uh, it came off of the machine with the support still attached. You see that? didn't remove it yet. But it won't be so bad. I also have a wafer comb. In the silicon wafer manufacturing process, wafer combs are exposed to high temperature and aggressive chemicals, which dictate the use of advanced thermoplastics. Uh, use case is going to be for space travel. Um, repeat, we want to make repeatable parts on manned uh, spacecraft. The parts need to be lightweight, strong, and not outgas in space. So the dock hatch panel was produced uh, for the Orion spacecraft, which is an interplanetary spacecraft intended to carry a crew of four astronauts, destinations at or beyond low Earth orbit. Antero 840CNO3 provides a mechanically strong material with ESD properties perfect for this, um, enabling it to be used as a structural polymer in manned space applications.
patients. Here is our Fortis 450. And on the inside, I have printed one of these document Here it is, right off the machine. Who was that? Just to show you. There we go. So this is a quote from Brian Kaplan, uh, the Additive Manufacturing Manager at Lockheed Martin Space. Uh, we've been able to see orders of magnitude savings both in cost and schedule on all these parts because part builds are very consistent, the material properties are well understood, and the build parameters are becoming better understood. Here are the industries that will benefit from Antero utilization. Aerospace, parts that are exposed to cleaning chemicals, fluids, hydraulic fluids, high temperatures. Uh, you can use it for clips, brackets, radomes, ducting, high requirement tooling. Um, obviously, we, we've been talking about space, for, uh, Antero used for space vehicles, ground support equipment, um, used during assemblies, tests, and flight operations. Um, industrial manufacturing uh, back down on Earth. Uh, high-end manufacturing with exposure to chemicals and high temps, clean room uh, compatibility. Oil and gas industry because of the exposure to hydrocarbons. And then also for motorsports. Uh, I do want to show you some other parts though real quick. I was able to create um, some of the a generative design brackets like General Electric uh, had a, a competition a few years back to make ecology design aerospace brackets um, for spacecraft. And so I had a lot of fun printing these and experimenting trying to get uh, the material, uh, the support material removed. And you can see that this is what design freedom is all about. Right here. Here's another example. Significant reduction in weight. This was a just a block of aluminum or steel before. Um, some other things that I want to talk about when it comes to support removal. Um, when I was working with this piece in particular, um, this is a housing for some type of throttle. Uh, it's really it, I printed it in this orientation, and I noticed that it was much easier to clean off the support material from the vertical surfaces than the horizontal holes. Um, I also noticed that it's easier, I, I like to let these parts cool before removing uh, the support material because of the, the support material, material will actually uh, cool at a different rate than the um, model material and it tends to kind of pull away a little bit from the model uh, over time. And that helps uh, facilitate its removal. I, I printed some uh, robot drippers, and these are pretty thin parts right here. And I was uh, intentionally aggressive when removing the material to see how far can I push things uh, before I start to break parts. And it was pretty far. Um, but still, when you're removing uh, that SUP 800B from something like this, uh, you want to make sure that you're supporting the really thin structures. Uh, while you're hammering away at it. Um, and last, I'm going to show you this sweet impeller I printed out of Antero. And I want to show you something else, too. Uh, this is, if this was made out of metal, this would be a, a pretty heavy chunk of metal. Um, and I spent some time working on this to make it lighter. 
and I can show you by putting a, a light behind it, you can see how it's printed with that honeycomb pattern on the interior, right? And so that significantly reduced the weight of this part. So that's pretty much all I have for today, friends. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about Go Engineer before we go. Uh, Go Engineer is the number one Stratasys reseller in North America. Uh, and we're also a uh, huge SolidWorks reseller uh, with 12,000 active SolidWorks users. Um, we have 29 offices across the United States. Uh, the Go Engineer Additive Manufacturing Services, we're not just um, selling printers here. Uh, we also provide phenomenal tech support. We have 3D printing uh, training. Uh, my friend Michael Brenholt uh, did a fabulous class on Insight, which um, I strongly encourage um, people to take if they're going to be using Stratasys machines, uh, FDM machines. And then we also have a service bureau. So if you want to try out some of these new materials, I just got a request today uh, for to print some parts in Antero. So thank you very much. Uh, I have been Richard Cromwell uh, from Go Engineer. Please feel free to reach out to me through email. Um, you can also uh, Find me on LinkedIn. Uh, I highly encourage you to go to Go Engineer's YouTube channel and become a subscriber. Uh, there is phenomenal, uh, it's a phenomenal resource. It's constantly being updated with new content. Above all, uh, for the absolute finest portfolio of technology tools and expertise for bringing your company's products to market faster and better, uh, please visit GoEngineer.com.